Well, we're over again. Now, since I recently got one of these, just to have a play around with and just to see how it is to actually use a vape, just because of, well, curiosity and to try it out, I kind of thought, hmm, what if I actually decide to build my own? So, this is what I came up with. I actually did a bit of research online to see if anybody has actually ever used an Arduino to do a vape. And yeah, there were a few examples, but I didn't actually take inspiration from those because a few were a bit too well, um, yeah, a bit hard to describe. I just didn't like them because they had like annoying animations on the screen and whatnot. And uh, others were actually really, really unsafe to actually use um, because they didn't have actually things that would uh, prevent uh, the battery from over discharging or, uh, well, overcurrent protection as well. So, uh, what we've got here is an Arduino Mega and, well, a breadboard and a display, of course. The Arduino uh, drives a MOSFET that gets controlled by uh, two buttons where you can set the power level and the thing also uh, monitors the battery voltage and, yeah. So, if we take a look at the screen that I've got here, I have two buttons. These buttons currently don't function, but these are going to be the buttons where you can actually set the power. I'm having some contact issues again with the breadboard, as usual. The display doesn't really like it. I'm not using an I2C display at the moment because, well, I have... I don't need to save on pins, at, really, and... The whole thing makes it a bit easier, and the code, code is a little bit shorter, and I actually don't need to use another library for this. But yeah, this is the final setup I have, and uh, it works perfectly fine, if the contact issues would stop. Now in the final version I actually won't be using an Arduino Mega, I will be using an Arduino Nano, and I will have this whole thing in a nice small box with four 18650s. Um, but you could also go down to two 18650s or one, and the whole thing would just still work just fine. With this setup that it's at the moment now, the uh, 18650s are in parallel and I get a total output voltage of 4.2 volts at maximum. You could modify this thing uh, differently to get uh, more power and higher voltages out of it by just uh, having two uh, cells in series and two in parallel of those each because I really don't like pulling huge amounts of current from the batteries, which uh, is a bit scary if you actually start to pull like 30 amps from one 18650. I just don't like doing it, especially in a small handheld thing like this. But yeah, uh, and the way this thing is totally set up now and how it will be in the end, uh, this is the first version, I'm probably going to make a second version which will be more powerful. The first version uh, uses an IRF uh, P240, which is actually mounted on a heatsink, just to ha provide a little bit of cooling. Yes, I could use an SMD MOSFET or a different MOSFET uh, to be tinier, but I had this one lying around, so why not use it? This thing can handle 20 amps, and uh, that will give me an estimate about 84 watts-ish or so. That means I can use a coil with a minimum resistance of 0 0.21 ohms. And personally, I don't know anyone who actually vapes uh, anywhere really beyond 40 or 50 watts, just because it's overkill. So as a simple uh, DIY vape, this works. And you can anytime uh, modify or upgrade this thing to output a huge amount of power as well. Uh, with the other setup, you could probably pull like over 200 watts out of this thing easily. And uh, if you would go even more extreme, you could make this thing uh, do infinite power until the MOSFET catches fire or the batteries explode. Yeah. But uh, this thing also has a few uh, protection features in it. But uh, let's go over the uh, overall functions at first before I go into whole protection stuff that this thing also features. Now, as you can see, uh, it says the power and percentage over here. Let's see if I can get this screen to make proper contact so we can see everything with a good contrast. And I can change that power level by just using two buttons, which are here. It goes from 0 to 100%, and if I press the fire button, which is next to it, an orange fire LED will light up, which is that one over here. A bit hard to see because the battery indicator LED is really freaking bright, but there you go. And I've just got an LED on the MOSFET's output just to see if this thing is actually switching or not. And uh, yeah, 
the power level in here actually correlates to how uh, the Arduino drives the PWM of the MOSFET, meaning if you increase it, of course, you are going to get a lot more power out of it. With an LED, it's a bit hard to really show that. For f oh, fuck, come on. There we go. But, uh, yeah, the LED does get brighter, but it's a bit hard to pick that up on camera. Yeah. Now, let's go to the first feature. You can see a small symbol here. This is supposed to show the top of the vape. Like so. And since there's smoke coming out of it, just to show that this thing is actually on, as well as the fire LED, well, the symbol changes to it having smoke coming out of it, and it also starts a timer. Uh, this timer automatically resets if you let go, and, well, what would happen if you keep the button pressed the whole time, for 10 seconds, you could actually swap that for more or less, however you want to, but if that timer will, uh, if that timer reaches zero, as you can see, the MOSFET turns off, the power, the fire LED, which is there, flashes a few times, and the display shows over time. And the MOSFET will not switch on here anymore, unless I actually take my finger off the fire button, and then the whole thing resets and goes back to normal. So that's one thing. This is uh, pretty much there to prevent the whole thing from overheating, and, uh, well, also that you don't don't have this thing constantly on and uh, your coils will uh, start burning the cotton or the coils themselves start melting. Uh, this thing here, for example, has a cutoff at 15 uh, seconds, a little bit longer, but since this thing provides more power, I mean, this thing is like 12 watts or so. Um, with the coils of order, I can get a maximum of 40 watts out of this, which is pretty nice. Uh, so, yeah. Oops. I have to reset it again. The spreadboard is freaking annoying because uh, there are. <laughs> Too many pins. There we go. So, well, as you can see, I have also have the battery voltage here displayed and a small battery symbol. Now, these two are not there just for decoration, and that LED which is here in the back, as you can see, it's always on in sign at the moment. This is actually a proper working battery indicator, meaning if the battery voltage drops slowly, the LED changes to green and the battery symbol actually changes. Um, showing how much charge you have left in the battery. Go over to re uh, green, then magenta. When the battery starts to get low, it goes to red. And if the battery is below 3 volts, the red LED will start flashing. And it also displays a small warning here. Now, um, what if the battery is low and I, st and I still want to use the vape, the vape? Well, I can't. It just says low battery, the fire LED flashes, and the MOSFET does not switch on at all. So that's uh, one thing to just protect the battery from over discharging and also to keep the thing online before the cutoff protection of the battery kicks in so that the whole thing, well, actually can still stay on uh, for a little bit of a while. Because at this lower level, the battery watch would constantly drop below 2.5 volts and uh, it would uh, switch off the um, battery protection, which would just make that a little bit of uh, an annoyance. And yes, I've pretty much just added the text on there just so you actually know what is going on and why the thing is not working. But yeah, now to actually simulate the battery, I've just got a potentiometer and I'm using it just to put the output of the potentiometer into the analog pin over there. And uh, yeah, just to simulate the battery, which goes. Uh, the battery usually has about uh, 2.4 volts when it's fully charged. And uh, 2.5 should be the absolute minimum for like the cutoff and everything. But uh, yeah, just to well, simulate that with the 5 volt rate of the Arduino, I'm just using the potentiometer so I can actually test if the battery monitor thing works. So yeah, that is a pretty much a basic overview of how this thing uh, works and what uh, small protection features it also has. Because well, that battery uh, protection circuit, uh, well, the battery protection function, this thing features was uh, pretty much not a single uh, project I saw uh, online and they were just well relying on the uh, battery cutoff protection circuitry in it to switch the battery off which I didn't like but yeah this thing just gives the user more feedback and doesn't have annoying flashing meme animations that uh, <laughs> usually go into that whole uh, vapor cliche which <laughs> is to be honest a little bit cringy but uh, yeah, 
just uh, for me this isn't really about the whole vaping aspect I just got one of these to mess around with and to just give it a try and uh, yeah it actually does taste pretty nice that's my favorite blue slush flavor and uh, yeah now all that's left is to put this all uh, on a proper circuit and make a nice case for it and have the whole thing finally in the end as a final product so yeah this is the first video on this I'll be a few more and I am also going to release the code and uh, the designs that I used as well as all the schematics for this on Thingiverse just so if you want to build one yourself as well well feel free to do it you can also use this for pretty much anything uh, else that ha that is well handheld and needs a PWM output or you could make the whole thing as a, a constant setup and have a set power level in there but yeah for anything that's small handheld and has a PWM output that can be pretty powerful could be useful as well instead of well just being a, a vape but yeah that's it for a moment Thank you for watching and I will see you in part 2.